Hello everyone, welcome to day two of Grand Prix Vancouver 2012 with me your host Rich Hagen and Mr. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth. We are getting ready for round 10 and it features Brandon Nelson up against Terry Lau. So there is Brandon Nelson who is going to get straight into action with I believe a turn one stone right Marshall. Oh that's one of my favorite openers in the format especially in draft uh, if, if he's going to be like a, maybe potentially a red white aggressive deck mm -hmm. here. This kind of uh, he looks like he is. This kind of deck can put a severe beating. It looks like we're going to get a righteous blow right here, and and I think that's a, a completely reasonable play. I'm sure Brandon could have seen that coming. Uh, he follows up with the bladed bracers, which is a very nice equipment that he can use later in the game, and a scroll of Avacyn, which is something that he's going to be able to uh, equip up to his creatures later and, and make them better. It looks like. Uh, Brandon might have mulliganed a bit here. He's got three cards, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess not. So land number four, pass. And we, we, from Terry, we see nothing. He does do a little miracle check there, but nothing else. So Druid's familiar. Take a look at the camera. Uh, so still nothing from Brandon's side. He's got five lands and just nothing. So it looks like, e even though he had one of the ideal openers. Yeah. Terry wow. doesn't have much either, though, because Terry, that's a druid's familiar, unpaired, and nothing's to come. Oh, he just sends it in. I, I don't know. I would be very wary about doing that. Uh, he, he's obviously aware of Righteous Blow, and losing your druid's familiar to a Righteous Blow is something that I'm just <laughs> Not nice. generally unwilling to accept that. Especially when Brandon just hasn't played anything, you have to wonder what cards he has in his hand. Usually, the guy's holding removal. You know, we were yeah. talking about uh, limited here. It, 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 there's not a lot he can have. It's either he's completely flooded or he has nothing. And we're going to see a voice of the provinces come down for Brandon. It's going to make a 1-1 one, one human token. Um, both of these things can wear the, the bladed bracers uh, pretty well. So Terry's just going to be looking to get a creature to pair up. Because if he does, then he can actually start attacking. <coughs> mm -hmm. Voice of the Provinces is a card that sees play, but I'm not super happy about it. Terry's thinking about where he wants to take this. He, you know, I can't see quite what's in his hand. Uh, he is just going to attack him goes in. Two, two, and it looks like Brandon has decided just to take it this time. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to play around a pump spell like Joint Assault. And he decided that the two damage was, was worth that. <coughs> I think he just Drew a righteous blow? Yeah. <laughs> Brandon now just drew a righteous blow. So I think he wouldn't mind uh, being able to block. And then righteous blow, if the guy uses a pump spell, that's usually a pretty strong play. But right now, he can gain five life from the scroll of Avacyn and draw a card. Probably wants to do that before combat. So this format really isn't meant to be this slow. Usually things okay. progress. Uh, well, I, and I think that we're going to see that Brandon's deck probably wants to go quicker as well. Yeah. Because we have 12 land on the table. All right. So I think we're starting to get a picture for what Terry's doing. I see a black and a blue card in his hand. Ah. Yeah. So that explains why he has all this land. And it looks pretty normal, you know, base green with some white. Yep. But it's actually, he's probably sporting some Borderland Rangers or some Abundant Growths. And he just has not drawn those yet. Sure. So Brandon, looks like he's got a five drop to crack here. 
I think that's a raging culture culture guys. Guys. Yeah, that, yeah, that is a card that I don't think it's one that you're you're super happy about, but it's big. It might do. I mean, it has a lot of power. We'll see if he can use it. Uh, it's, it's typically a card that you want to get some equipment on. I mean, the Bladed Racers will do something, but even then it still just trades on the ground. And we see it yet another planes from Terry here, so he's definitely missing some fixing elements that he wants, and he just reluctantly ships the turn back. I guess he didn't want to trade for the Poltergeist. He wants to just uh, block. Mm -hmm. Brandon's going to sacrifice the scroll of Avacyn and attempt to gain some life as well. Are we going to see an Eaten by Spiders? We are. Yeah. Eaten by Spiders comes down. Now that's going to prevent the life gain part of the scroll of Avacyn. Yeah, you still get to draw the card, but you, of course. The important part is the card. <laughs> yeah. Alright, that's a nice play though uh, from Terry as it leaves Brandon with a 6-1 and a 1-1 and a Bladed Bracers. And I, I see another <laughs> Raging Poltergeist in Brandon's hand. Really? I think... When you leave your draft table with two of those in your hand, you are uh, not thrilled. Is, is this a situation where you potentially play the Raging Poltergeist before combat to leave yourself just one mana open to sort of lull your opponent into the sense that you've played for your turn and then you go in with the dice and then there's a block and you actually simply, rather than trading, you actually use your righteous blow as on, on the blocker? So I, I think that, that Brandon is, is, is trying to decide between a couple of lines here. Uh, one of them is he can attack and just uh, expect a block and then Righteous Blow, and, and that would make some sense. Even if Terry has a pump spell, he will still be uh, killing the Druid's Familiar. Yes. Let's see what, let's see what uh, Brandon decides here. He is just going to ship. So he's just going to he's just gonna say, I'm going right, to play Righteous Blow. So the two, two blocks to one. Yeah, and you still just want to kill it. There's the blow. Here's the Joint Assault back the other way. Yep. And we're also going to see just blow back the other way as well. another one, right? And and that's you know one of the downsides to the uh, raging poltergeist, which we see another one of, and then we're going to see a Seraph Ser Sanctuary is going to gain a life off of that. This has been a weird game. I mean, like Druid's Familiar is one of the best cards in the set. Conley Wood said when he opens his pack today, he told me this yesterday. I said, what's, what's the you know non-rare that you want to see the most? And he said, Druid's Familiar. That's what he wants to see the most. And we can see that normally Druid's Familiar does a ton of work, but Terry's deck seems to be a little creature light, or maybe he's just flooding, maybe he's just got creatures, but they're in the wrong colors. And yeah, uh, the Druid's Familiar has been so, a bear. Yeah, so we have red, red, white, not aggro yeah. against Grizzly Man. And, and now we see a Gold Knight Redeemer come down. He's going to gain two life. You get to gain two life for each other creature you control. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it's a 4-4 four, four flying, and he's going to get to put the bladed bracers on it as well. Indeed. So Terry's still up to now eight mana, but with nothing to do, basically. Yeah, and this is going to be a big one uh, in nine mana. Because Brandon's going to be able to equip and hit for five with Vigilance, just with that Angel. Yeah. We've already seen Eaten by Spiders go by. Yeah. Th that's a card that uh, I think I think it's okay to main deck. I think you need to keep an eye on it, though, and make sure that you have enough targets for it. I think you'd rather not main deck it, ideally, but like you don't feel that bad doing it. Sure. Especially since the removal's pretty light in this format, and just having uh, something that says three mana instant kill that thing, you're pretty happy. Now, obviously Terry's bummed out that he's had to use it earlier because there is a Bladed Racers, and that also, you know, Eaten by Spiders also takes out all the equipment attached to the creature. Okay, so it looks like he, uh, Thunderous Wrath just came down on the poor bear. <laughs> And, I mean, it makes sense, because now uh, Brandon gets to get in for six, and he's going to have lethal on the table. Rage, Raging Poltergeist actually gets to attack and kill things. Right. Well, things being Terry. Yes. Now, Brandon, presumably, even though there's nine mana on the other side of the table, he has to expect that Terry is missing a color. Doesn't he? I think because otherwise, what, what's sitting in his hand? I, I think I would just assume that my opponent was flooding 
a lot. Cut. I, I right. think. All right. Ooh, Creator of yeah, 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 comes yeah. down. So, again, this is a card that wants creatures on the battlefield, just like Pear Bear, right? You get your, uh, your Drills Familiar going, and all of a sudden, all your creatures are awesome. And a Crater of Behemoth is a sweet finisher, but it's very, very expensive. It costs eight mana, I think. Five GGG. Yep. That's a ton of mana. And it usually just ends the game when it comes down. Of course, in this case, that's not... Uh, Terry's going to managed to get one extra turn out of his uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth. Yeah. But it looks like Terry either just had a, a, a lousy draw here where he wasn't able to draw enough creatures, or his deck might have punished him. We see a, a Devout Chaplain come down, and I think this is just going to be a good game for you here. Skip sir. Face. Yeah, I mean, a Terminus would be fine. He could live another turn with the Voice of the Provinces, but we're not talking about ways to actually recover and win the game. In the so, background, by the way, you can mm -hmm. see uh, Conley Woods uh, in his matchup against Morgan Chang. Chang at 9-0, and Conley Woods at 8-1, and and Mort Colerero, the extremely handsome coverage reporter on the right-hand side of the screen there. Um, he'll be bringing you all the action uh, in text coverage uh, of that match. So that really was a strange one to get us going. It, it felt that was not how I thought that was going to go based on the lands that you saw earlier. That's right. I mean, you say, oh, here we are. It's the red-white aggro deck featuring... Yeah. You know, Merland Inquisitors and right wing leaders and guessing right. Right intents and, right. and, and in, in, in. And it looks like his deck is a much slower version that's actually looking to try to resolve some big angels. Some, yeah. six, some six casting costs. It's red white control, isn't it? In a sense. I mean, it I might mean, be. It's looking like that. I mean, I mean he led off with uh, uh, Stone Rain. What is this? Oh, uh, I know. Like this good, is yeah. not... <laughs> you know what that is? This is Rashad Miller. That's Rashad's... Checking the Dracula. focus on the camera. Do you see how blurry those and are? And discovering that everything's blurred. Also, I want that Geist. <laughs> yeah, you see, I want that Talia. <laughs> <laughs> it's a foil Geist, it seems. Uh, it's very lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Are you a foil fan? Generally? Oh, yes? Oh, yeah. So, Foreign card foils. I love this. Okay, were you playing when foils began? No. Okay, so... Well, they've always been a part of Magic for me. I, I, I used to play before that, but since I came back... Sure. All right. So, the very first set... I have no idea. No, no one has ever explained this to me. If anyone is on Twitter uh, feels like tweeting me the, uh, the correct answer to this... Uh -huh. For no reason that anyone can discern, the chase oh, that's much in the first ever set was Ring of Gifts. Right? It, is that like the, the weird icing uh, uh, manipulator? Cut, yes. And okay. It was utterly, utterly absurdly valued. It was, it was like this mythical thing that somebody somewhere in Bratislava <laughs> might once have opened. There were rumors all around the internet of like, wait, I'm trying to complete my foil set and I'm sure there's one in there somewhere. Where can I find? And it was crazy for the first couple of weeks. It was it was almost as if none had been printed. Okay. Right? And, which wasn't true. Okay. It, but just and this wasn't a chase reason, rare at the time. Or oh, anything. God, no. Ring, Ring Gix was a, you know, it was a perfectly fine card. It was, uh -huh. it was rare, but um, it was just... Weird. People went bonkers to try and find it and couldn't. Um, and it, it was just it was yeah. crazy. If anyone knows the story behind why Ring of Gix was so ridiculously... Uh, in essence, overvalued as the foil of choice from that first set. Maybe it was just, it was pretty. I don't know, maybe everyone, maybe it was aesthetically pleasing. Like, I do enjoy an aesthetically pleasing foil, but I don't usually value it, you know, multiple times its normal value just because of that. Yeah, and, and I mean, you know, let's skirt around numbers, but let's say 10 to 15 times. Whoa! Oh yeah, that's ridiculous. Easily. Easily. Well, that's insane. Yeah, those older foils, um, they're very sought after. The, the ones that, when they were kind of first trying it out, are the ones that everybody wants. Mm. So we're going up for game two, um, featuring almost certainly not the green-white deck that Brandon thinks he's playing against. Yeah, this is going to, like, if we see Terry lead off with an abundant growth, I think things are going to go quite differently. Yes. <laughs> Although, I really want to know how many creatures Terry has in his deck, because we only saw, what, two or something? And it was even running things like... Uh, Bone Splinters, and again, that's another card that really wants you to have creatures. The Crater Hoof Behemoth, Behemoth wants you to have creatures so that you're still alive when you resolve it. Well, maybe we could get some deck lists. Subtle hint from Mr. Hagen here. Mm. 
All right. Let us look at our openers. Brandon seems reasonably well set. He's I, got three lands. I do see three lands as well. And as for Terry, Terry's Terry's going to want to be pretty plain to the forest. Yeah. We had that before. Oh, Brandon's going to send away. Okay. I didn't see what his spells were to go with three lander. I did not either. Generally, when people see a three lander, they're usually pretty content with kind of any mix of spells, <laughs> which is usually a mistake. I mean, usually you do need to take a close look to see if you actually have a way to win the game. And it looks like Brandon decided he did not. Okay. Going to six on a draw is not a big deal. Like You, you can recover from that pretty quickly. So Terry has kept here. Acceptable opener here. Let's see if Brandon agrees. I'm just thinking. We're away. And, like, and is this an abundant yeah, game? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like high five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now this game could take a much different complexion. And it, you know, it's funny because Brandon probably is like, well, yeah, you'd want an abundant growth in your deck, and you might not know that. The Terry's actually got quite a, quite a few different colors in this deck. <laughs> yeah. So we're let's see what happens. Oh, and another oh, color growth. Oh, right. Now we're talking. Huh. Five color green, eh? Yeah. Um, I think that that was a righteous blow that Terry drew as well. Second land from Brandon is Seraph Sanctuary. It's going to gain him a life and not do much else. We're going to see a Wandering Wolf from Terry Lau. Now that's more like it. This is what Terry's deck wants to do. Playing yes. some creatures. We're going to see a three drop. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a Fire Bog Explorer. Explorer. Which is interesting because Terry, I think, is going to be casting some black spells in this game, but, but he might not have a swamp. Well, yeah. he, does, he doesn't have any. Okay. And, and in fact, he's being pretty bold in that he has literally not splashed anything. He's uh, just, in terms of just he working off the abundant growth. 10 for 7 planes. Um, and then double abundant growth, seeing what else he's got in terms of, he's got any other fixing. Is there a ranger? Floating around. Um, no. No, no, no. So he's, he's just looking at his double abundant growth. For his splash. He's got two black cards, Bone Splinters and Undead Executioner. That's his black splash. Ooh, so we're going to see a lightning prowess come down on the Far Bard Explorer. And I don't think that Terry's going to be able to deal with this at instant speed. That wolf looks like it is not long for this world. Indeed. Oh, you can see the, the look, the, the face of a man who's about... Uh, and he gives the yeah. thumbs up. Now, if I'm Brandon, I actually just main face kill the wolf here. The main reason for that is that if, if Terry does have a pump spell, he can use it to get through like four extra damage, you know, yep. when he goes to attack. And I think I'd rather just make sure that the wolf's gone. There's not a huge downside here uh, to waiting either. You know, it does prevent Terry from casting a certain creatures. But even then, Brandon has the opportunity to just untap and kill the next thing. Oh boy. The Wandering Wolf gets picked up. It is <laughs> floating around. <laughs> I, and it's coming in. I tell you what. <laughs> oh. Terry has some seriously exciting cards in his deck. I mean, we saw a Crater Hoof Behemoth, which yeah, is yeah, no yeah. joke. Okay. He has Restoration Angel. He has Entreat the Angels. He, he has, has a Restoration has, Angel in his hand. He has Champion of Lampholt. Oh my goodness. He has an Entreat too? Yeah. He has Herald of War. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, why did he bother? He must have... He, he just I ran out of play right? Oh, I mean, okay. he has, like, Peel from Reality as a single card blue splash. Oh, okay. okay. So he just threw a couple of cards to round it out and just said, hope I get there. All right, so Restoration Angel is going to come down and save the wolf here. It's going to blink it, and it's just going to put off... It's only going to put it off for a turn here. To be honest, given that his, given that he's splashing... The way he is. I'm surprised he hasn't gone five color because he has a thunderbolt. Um, May so as well. Then you might as well just play one of one of everything else. I mean, I guess I'd, I'd certainly put in the thunderbolt over the peel against Brandon. 
mm. we saw a Gold Knight Redeemer and a Voice of the Provinces. Yeah. Like, I would like to kill those people. Well, maybe he's, maybe he's sideboarded into that. As we see a raging poltergeist come down yep. for Brandon. Poltergeist comes down, and Brandon uh, still has the activation left on his uh, lightning prowess. It's just sitting there waiting. So in a sense, Terry's playing with a deck that's kind of symptomatic of the format that you have a really good deck mm -hmm. of 19 cards. Yeah. All and right, so now the, the Wandering Wolf bites it. Yeah, th this is something you see as uh, people struggle to make playable yeah. sometimes. And then where, where is my last four cards coming from? Uh, that was true for Ross Drew, the 14-year-old who went to 8-0 yesterday and lost his last round. He had what looked like a tremendous near mono black deck, 16 great black cards. Okay. And then, hmm, where's the rest of my deck? Gold Knight Redeemer comes down, so we're going to be gaining four life. And this is going to be a great stabilization play for Brandon as well, because it's going to shut off the, the Restoration Angel from attacking. Now, Brandon has to decide if he wants to send in his Poltergeist. I, I think you just do. Uh, you know, we've seen Righteous Blow, but like, what are you going to do? N never attack? As it happens, I've looked at Terry's deck and you've got Brandon's deck, so I haven't gone through Brandon's list. Uh -huh. But from Terry's point of view, seeing Brandon gain life is completely irrelevant because what, ah. we, what we know. Did you see what the, he just Yeah, that's, that's the Thunderbolt. So you yeah. called that one, the Thunderbolt did come yeah. out. Yeah. Um, but you find that Terry, as long as he's alive late, what trumps a gigantic entreat the angels? Nothing. From his point of view. Nothing. The, Terminus or something. Yeah, yeah so he, he's functionally just waiting to kill Brandon. So in that sense, Brandon can go to 22 and then 27 or just go to Madison or whatever. Uh -huh. and, nope, I don't care. So this is an interesting position for Terry. He has his champion of Ramblet in hand. Okay. But it comes down to one. So he essentially can't play it. He's going to have to wait for Brandon to make a mistake of having that thing tapped at some point during his turn where he can play it and then another creature. Yep. That, that's his plan to make that happen. And, I mean, if Brandon plays correctly, that probably just won't. Like, he might just want to attack them, you know? Like, sometimes people get impatient and they'll just be like, well, I'm, I might not kill anything. And an Eaten by Spiders comes down on yep. this step. So we've seen Righteous Blow, Eaten by Spiders, and a Thunderbolt take down two six drops and a five drop. That's value. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Terry's yes. one for one but he's spending very little mana to do it. He hasn't been able to really punish Brandon by, by cracking back with huge stuff, but it looks but like again, from what he, you're he seeing, he will need to. He will eventually. This is, this is perfect for Terry. He's at 18, he has all his colors. And in fact, he's, he's winning the race right now as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's got a 3-4. We're what? fine. Yeah. Brandon, a couple of cards in hand. in his Vancouver Canucks hat. Oh, is this going to be the behemoth? Uh, oh, no, this looks like an Entreat the Angels. <laughs> but one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? I, I, there's, there's so many yeah. yeah, there it is. All right, so he miracles Entreat the Angels, and it, now all of a sudden, Brandon is staring down five, four, four flyers, and I think we are going to be entering the scoop phase. There you go. There it goes. Entreat the Angels tends to end the game very quickly. Like mm. you said, you know, it's a matter of time for Terry. He's got yeah. a lot of big bombs in his deck that he can draw to just finish a game where life, your life total could be 50 and it's kind of irrelevant. I, I mean, really, that was that was as perfect as game one was miserable. And that yes. he opened on abundant growth, turned two abundant growth. Yep. From there, he can cast <laughs> he looks a lot anything. Happier. He is such a sweet guy. He was at, uh, the, remember that these two at the same draft table as Shahar Shenha, who we filmed uh, drafting. Uh -huh. So later on in this draft, we'll get to see how Shahar built his deck. Um, he had Terry uh, to his right. Um, and it uh, be interesting to see how Shahar ends up. He's playing Manny Davudi in this round. Um, as we see former champion Paul Rietzel um, in front of us. Uh, a winner in round one, yes indeed. Eight and two. Um, playing red and white, Paul. Blue-white? I was playing blue-white today. Who's playing that? Who are you? What have you done with Paul Rietzel? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> no, we saw him play blue-green yesterday as well. And uh, Paul definitely has different gears in his game. We know where he wants to go. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. Africa. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
think I'll be back there soon. That'll be his postal address. Yeah. Where, would you, where would you move to? If you could go, if you could go uh, me? Yeah, if you could go anywhere in magic. So where, where would you be? Even though it's a really scary place. Yeah. I would go to Rise of the Eldrazi world. Like, is that Zendikar? Sure. I, it, yeah, I yeah, think it yeah. happened on Zendikar. Yeah. But that, I want to be in the Rise of the Eldrazi time frame for Zendikar. Okay. That's where wow. I am. Yeah. That is pretty scary. I mean, that's where I like to be. And Fair I'd enough. probably be a wall. Fair enough. With power. Okay. Yeah, so yeah I, I, like, I would like to be reborn as a Vincent. Everybody has a dream, Rich. Don't judge me. Oh, I, I would. I would never judge you. <laughs> not, no, no. <laughs> I. The, the place. Not even in private. Uh, that, you see, I would like to go. Uh, Where do you live? I was like, going to wake gonna, up in the morning I before he realizes travel. he's in Seattle. Actually. Yeah, yeah. If I, was, if I was going to travel, uh -huh. I would want to visit okay. all the places in uh, in Rachel Rock. Okay. okay. It was like Coastal Tower. Uh huh. And, and that whole sort of cycle of life. There are yeah. so many pretty places to go see on that plane. Okay. Like, you know, if you could take, 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 take the bus trip, that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 And I, I'd be like, yeah. I think for vacation, I'd probably go to Bent. Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's pretty noble. The skies, the skies are clear, everyone's nice, no one mugs you. They're all nice. very noble. Na nature, noble, flying transport. Yeah. Go hang out with Rafiq nice. for a while. Rent a trampoline. Yeah. I think I like uh, I think I like Terry Lau in this matchup after seeing that second game. If he can hit one abundant well, growth, it just feels like he has answers for all the things that Brandon are doing, and Brandon isn't able to put up enough pressure early. And you know, frankly, Terry's deck actually just has some game. Like if he just goes wandering wolf into into druids for me, uh, yeah. you know, like, that's a good one. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Yeah, and I mean Terry has fourteen creatures, so it's not like Brandon's gonna easily overwhelm him by Terry seeing the wrong part of his deck and, and that Terry that, you know, it's not like the Raging Poltergeists are likely to repeat what they did in Game 1, where they actually turned sideways for 6 damage. One time. Yeah. Oh, the other one traded for a one casting oh, cost removal spell. Yeah. yeah. I, if I play Raging Poltergeist, I want a way to equip it, you know? I, <laughs> I want something to get its toughness up, like, a little bit and keep attacking. What was the, um, what was the plus... Uh, is it called a shield? Plus not plus three? Uh, Vanguard shield is the one in this set. Yeah, sure. And there's but one called the quarter shield, shield, shield before, was, like that. And I mean, yeah. you, you quite happily equip it into a 6-4. Yeah, the problem is, is that then your deck has an Vanguard shield. Oh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> and you're not happy about that one. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's see what happens here in game three. Brandon looking, it doesn't look like he's got... I want to see a crater hoof come down again. Yeah, I don't think Brandon has any white which means I suspect this is going away. About it. We'll see. Every time you look, there will be no planes in that seven. I'm pretty sure. He's thinking about how many planes he has in his deck and how long he has to draw one of them. Yeah, and how relevant it is at, at this stage. Because, of course, he's playing. He's keeping. He said keep. Well, he's got a lot of high-end one, hasn't he? He's looking yes. at his big fat flyers. Yes. So... Oh, let's see. And we're going to see a Cathedral Sanctifier. So this goes along with Terry's game plan. Normally I don't really love a Cathedral Sanctifier. But this really does actually fit what he's doing. And when your opponent's running Raging right, Poltergeist, this card gets a lot better. He gets a game free life and it's like a seal of kill your Poltergeist. It's very good. Brandon triple Hayes. triple mountains. Yeah. So why me? No. And Sanctifier beatdown continues. Yeah. But this is not plan A. This is plan number three. Now we still haven't we haven't seen an abundant growth out of Terry and and, and that could be a critical factor in this game. Brandon, Brandon is short on color and amount. That is a righteous... No, that's an entreat. So this game is going to have to go quite a bit longer for Terry. Now, if he does draw a pose, though, he can just entreat for one and make it a 4-4. Four, four. Mm. 
Metal Swine comes down on Terry's side, and that is going to deliver some beats if, if Brandon can't find. Ugh. No, I don't like those rams. I know you don't. And and to be fair, anecdotally, this weekend, every time someone's yeah. on camera, they're, they're making you look smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, the way that it actually pans out is that you don't get punished that much for them. But, no, it, but, but it is a tangible downside. I mean, that should be a plains or, or another mountain, in my opinion. Looks like he's drawn a plains here. So if he has one of his uh, patented Raging Poker guys, he will all be able to play it this turn. So we have the planes. Uh, and I guess the story with a card like that is you go, nine times out of ten I'm fine. And maybe I net gain you know, this many life. How many games did that impact positively uh -huh. in any meaningful way? Right. And then on the tenth time, it cost me something very tangible how Not, much was that downside yes and even though 90 percent of the time you're yeah. you're up is it a sufficient game to, to justify it and for me so we see an Arstad scrapper come down for brandon for me which which is capable of trading with the metal mm -hmm. side which is really what's important for me i think the number okay now so we, he, he did hit his abundant growth could be a big deal it does give him a second white source as well, so he can entreat when he sees fit. Yeah, that opens up four cards for him. I assume. I'm going to execute him most splinters in black, heal from reality in blue, and thunderbolt in red. One, two, three, four, and hey, there's one of them right now. Ta-da! On that execution. Now, what I was going to say is, is that it, to me, I think the downside. You were guessing 90%. I think it's more like 60 to 70. Like, I think it's that bad for you. Well, if it is, it. if it is that, then and, you would and never play it. I think the upside is, like on a scale of 1 to 10, I think the upside is like a 1. Yeah, sure. And I think the downside is like a 7 or an 8. Like, so, <laughs> that, so for yeah. me, it's just, I don't do yeah. But that's why magic's so interesting. Yeah. It's something to follow the Yes. And yet we can have a genuine debate about its value and it can impact it quite significantly. Absolutely. Alright, so Brandon has hit his second plane and he has drawn extra life from it. And so so he's now gained two life from it. Yep. So you know he will have gained two life from it. It is not inconsequential, it's just not Again, for me, I, I put it on that, that other. Mm -hmm. Reach out, unnet executioner, uh, will bite the dust off Pillar of Flame, which means it will get exiled, which is very neat, because it means the minus two, minus two will not happen. But every land that comes down, what we know, and Brandon will at least suspect, is that in Treat the Angels, is getting closer. Yeah, now, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how Terry decides when he wants to. Like, th at this point, he needs to decide if he wants to make one angel, two angels, three angels. Like, you, you, you know, you're not going to make a game plan where you're like, I'm going to try to entreat for four angels. Like, that is not necessarily going to be something that he's going to get the mana for. Wait, yes, you are. Why? Right, because against red white, you're, ne uh -huh. you're never going to make one. Uh -huh. I mean, making one is... Why would is, you make is, one? One is four. Against, it's a against, four, against, four, four, four. Oh, come on. Have you ever played with Arrow Mental? No, I've, yes, I, I have many, many times. I, I accept well. that that is a good card. Okay. But Entreat the Angels is not a 4 4 flying. How many times have you lost a game with an, with an Arrow Mental? Any number of times. Because they only need one removal spell for that one flyer. Okay. Or one flyer of their own to block your one flyer. Uh -huh. So you never want it to be one. And against, if you're, if you're going to play again, I mean, apart from anything else, Red's the color of Thunderbolt. Sure. So one of one of them you assume will just die. So and you think he should? I mean, because in I my opinion, he, I, 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 I would play two of them. Like if it's two, I'm playing it, and I've played okay. one many times and been pretty happy with it. Oh so. sure, okay. Yeah. But, but it, I'm, I'm talking specifically here for Terry. So, so it's all about being alive. I want to see what Terry does on this turn. Okay. Lightning prowess. Lightning prowess comes down. It doesn't seem to be a huge factor. Uh, just, uh, well, yeah, and 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 Brandon is currently able to get him with his three three flying. Like, I, if Ter if Brandon, just, excuse me, if Terry just does nothing here, okay, so he does have a play. Eight. If I would have been treated on his turn if I didn't have anything else, he does have other things, so so it makes sense. Sure. And he's going to entreat right now. You have 15 minutes, you 
I think this is the right play. I think I like entreating for two. He he only had the mana to do entreat for two on this turn, so I think that sure. his his line is is quite good of being like, well, I'm going to take out your angel. Although I, I honestly don't know how relevant that emancipation angel is once you get once you two get four your four fours four, yeah. on. But I, I might have but waited. If, but, but of course, with lightning prowess down, that then it could that trade. enables one trade. Good call. Yeah, that's a good point. And and I think that I want to protect. Like I would definitely not want to trade <laughs> like as it yeah. stands he's going to have brandon on a two turn call yes he's going to go eight eight you're done. yep and brandon is now has the onus to try to figure stuff out now i do see a thunderbolt in brandon's hand yeah i think if i have a thunderbolt i probably just main phase kill one of his i do not want to risk joint assault. Out. yeah by a joint assault oh. Th that is just a, something that I'm just not willing to accept. All right, so he is going to go ahead and do it right now. I, I definitely agree with that play. That's something that people overlook a lot. It's easy so to now, get into the mentality of waiting. Okay, you know? so right now, if Brandon costs the voice of the provinces, uh -huh. it's like the entreat. That, that's the entreat done. No, voice of the provinces is a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, but because of lightning cross. Oh, right. Okay, so he can trade him up. Also, voice costs six, so he can't, but... No, no, yeah. no, no, no. But, I mean, but if he know, makes a 3-3... Three, three over the next couple of turns. Okay. That's, you know, where, where we've reached. Then yeah, he will have... The so then Terry would have gotten a two-for-one. Yeah. Which is really good. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah. Brandon to 11. Three-turn clock right now. Man, Entreat is so sweet. <laughs> Card is so awesome. All right, so ping you for one. Take that, Terry Lau. Go to 19. Ew. The Nettle Swine and the Narsad Scrapper are just staring at each other down on the battlefield. They apparently don't want to tangle. See a raging poltergeist. Okay. Feel the joy. Which kind of matters here, right? Because now, look at this. So now he actually gets to attack with his Narstad scrapper. And I mean, Terry is at 19. Even if he takes it, the most it could be is what three, four, five, six is the board state since. Not insignificant, but pump once. Pump once, and he still has a land drop, and then a poltergeist. Okay. Ta-da. I like Brandon's. He's fighting here. He, you know, he's got some a lot of power on the board right now. Yep. The lightning prowess is going to be able to keep dinging away, and and if he needs to, he can also just attack with his barbar explorer at some point as well. What is this? A natural end comes down in the lightning prowess. So Brandon has to decide if he wants to get in a ping of damage before uh, before it goes away, or if he'd rather leave back a blocker. I think I would just go ahead and ping here. There's not a lot of cards that Terry has that can reach out and kill the Poltergeist. Yep. I mean, he does have a, a bun and growth, so there's things that Brandon doesn't know about, potentially, but... All right, so insta-block. Yeah, yeah, Righteous, righteous blow. blow. Again, that card is so fragile. Yeah, four damage comes through. And we're going to see a Wandering Wolf, which eh, shouldn't do a whole lot here, but Brandon's going to need at least to add another creature to his board, ideally to get, take care of that angel. He has three red cards. One of them is Stone Rock. Oh, that's what he drew. I believe that's what he's just drawing, yeah. That, that is a card that, well, he's only got three red sources. He's still going to need a flyer here. Gold Knight Redeemer would be ideal. Yeah. Gain some life, get a little cushion. All right, so he's just going to go ahead and attack with his Scrapper because he has to. As the board sits, he can take a hit from the Angel and the Wolf together and be at one, and he's going to need to chump block something on the Swine if that's the case. And... We see another Raging Poltergeist. And a Stone Right, pair it up. And he has... Oh, that's nice. He's got the one Mountain up so that he can trade that off with the Neville Swine. Yes. But really, the angel is the problem here. 
That is a crater hoof behemoth. <laughs> and he just extends the hand. Good game. I guess he. I, I guess yes. the uh, the top deck extend hand yes. is, a, is a move I haven't quite perfected yet. But wow, um, the crater hoof behemoth having <laughs> essentially overrun attached to it 